what's up hello y'all welcome back to the complicated entertainment channel if you are new to the channel you should have been here <laughs> i'm just playing returning members and the channel members i love y'all i hope you're doing good i hope you're okay first things first we're gonna get into beyonce okay beyonce you know she is always the talk of the town okay but now they're saying she's copying all of her peers okay they say she's been copying rihanna with her hair care line um that she's copying uh taylor swift with her book okay for the album and she copied taylor swift for her tour for her tour film okay let's get into it so um all of this is being brought up because beyonce is releasing a cowboy carter art book okay she's selling the art book it includes 136 pages of never seen before imagery from the cowboy carter era um no shade but i don't want this who who is buying this stuff like who sits down and says you know what i want to buy pictures to have in a book who says that shit? Like, I'm just being really honest here. Like, I don't think anybody needs to be buying that. It gets to a certain point where you're just you're just rich and don't have any, you don't know what to do with your money. You're just spending money with no real intention. Like, I'm sorry, an art book? What is this? Arts and crafts in middle school? What, like, come on now. And it's no shade, no shade at all. But um, they're saying that she's copying Taylor Swift because as of recently, she just dropped one, like literally like less than a week ago for her heiress tour. It's a book that, you know, fans can buy and it has information in it. I feel like, it, all right, it gets to a certain point where some things, no. Why are we selling this, okay? Like, you can tell that people are trying to get as much and squeeze as much money from the fans as possible. Beyonce has released a new product every single damn day. Okay, now this is different though because this does pertain to music. So I will give Beyonce some leeway on this one. You know, it is, it's a musical thing. I get it. It's for her Cowboy Carter album. Fine, right? But I do think that deep down inside, um, I don't think that Beyonce is copying her because people have been saying Beyonce has been doing this for years, okay? And also, Beyonce released an art book. Taylor Swift released some random ass book with some information in it. it does, you know, it's not really an art book like that. But people do feel like Beyonce is still a copycat. They still, they, they feel like Beyonce still be copying, okay? Um, there are so many images of her copying J-Lo's looks, so many pictures of her copying Aaliyah, so many things of her just being a, like a full on, just no originality, you know? I feel like I can see what y'all are saying because I feel like a lot of things Beyonce has done has been like borrowed concepts in many, 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 many ways. But I do think that deep down inside, um, I don't think that Beyonce has the intention of copying. I think that she just is very, very, very inspired by people around her. And she tries her best to put her own spin on it, okay? And that's my opinion, okay? You may you may disagree with me. That's fine. That's cool. We can agree to disagree. Let's move on to this next topic. Moving on to Khalid and Normani. They are gearing up to drop a new song again after their song, Love Lies. It was a smash hit in 2018. I love that song. It was amazing. Um, you know, so they are gearing up to release another comeback single for both of them. This could be a comeback single for both artists because both of these artists have kind of been like, you know, under the radar. So, you know, what's not a better way to reunite with the person you all have a platinum song together with? This is nice. This is really cute, okay? Now, this has people saying, so was all that stuff really a PR stunt for Khalid? Because, no shade, it kind of gives PR stuntish. But Khalid did say he was hesitant on releasing new music. So maybe this was already in the stash, okay? And um, it just so happened that he got outed before this song comes out, okay? Now, my opinion is this. I'm not mad at this. Khalid should take advantage of this moment take advantage okay you got outed out cool but normani what the fuck are you doing okay girl you dropped the whole album and you just gonna abandon your album for somebody else's single for somebody else's album you literally abandoned your own project and you're doing all these photo shoots and pictures this is like what are you doing what are you doing you abandoned dopamine no visuals no nothing not a thing with one sorry ass r&b performance on some random stage what are you doing and you post that with Khalid, like everything's fine. It's not. And if this song comes out with a video and you're featured in the video, I'm I'm going to be having some issues with you. Because why are you shooting other people's music video content before you shoot your own music videos? Okay? Before you... I'm sorry. Maybe it's already done. Maybe the videos for dopamine are already done. But why are they not released? Okay? Why should we see you in the music video this year for the first time from someone else's project? Mind you, you dropped an album this year too. That's concerning. Uh, but no shade to Normani and Khalid, but y'all released this song too late. Like, <laughs> it's the holiday season, baby. Like, it's the holiday season. 
unless it's a holiday song, it ain't going to chart well. It ain't going to do that well. But it's okay because, you know, the holiday season will pass. And maybe after the holiday season is over, they will have, you know, radio play and a cute budget for promo. So we're going to see how it goes. We're going to see how it goes. But yes, y'all, comment down below. What's your opinion on that? What's your opinion? I'm here for the collab. Like, you know, but like for Normani's career thing, career side, I'm not rocking with the way she's doing this thing. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Oh, well, well, well. Moving on to Nikki, despite rumors of her hiatus album being canceled, okay, you know, she's doing a deluxe version of PF2 this month. Yes, December this month. And um, people are saying, oh my gosh, it's canceled because she announced a new album in 2025, okay? So that means she's canceling her deluxe. But there are reports that she is still working on it, okay? Um, listen here, Nicki Minaj is not Cardi B. She gonna drop music. Before she was even fa- before she was even famous, she was dropping hella music. Like, she had about three mixtapes before her first album, okay? Every year before her debut, she was dropping music content she was consistent in releasing music this this whole not dropping music thing that's that's a new thing for artists that's a new thing for artists like that's a, a 2020s and 2015 and above trend where artists don't drop shit back in the day artists were dropping music i mean except lauren hill but rappers no rappers they dropped music like every year boom 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 mixtape album feature on this feature on that a random single with a random video this thing that thing a random feature on somebody else's mixtape a random feature on somebody else's album it was just, it was people were just working you know and i feel like people are shocked that she's dropping a hiatus deluxe and a new album because they don't understand how rap has always been it has always been very fast paced with releases like like it, it it's just you rapping like when you a rapper you just want to rap you know so these new artists who are rappers and they aren't dropping music and they can't put out art it's because they aren't rappers they're not really talented like that you know what i'm saying um and back in the day like rappers they all they did was be in the studio rapping nowadays being a rapper or female rapper is so much politics and so much like other vanity things that people focus on that is not rapping so it's like Oh my gosh, she's dropping all this art. Yeah, Nikki's a rapper who actually writes her raps and, and makes art. So of course she's dropping music, you know? So I'm here for it. I, I'm, I love it. I love when Nikki stays true to the game. And she keeps rap alive. Like, Nikki is the only one keeping rap alive. I think she's even doing it better than some of the males out here. I'm seeing people in the comments saying, Oh, well, you know, she's going to be oversaturated. Oh, Nikki needs to go on a hiatus. Nikki needs to go away. Oh, Nikki is online too much. da 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 why would she stop making art though? Like, why why would anybody want her to stop making music? You know, I am all here for her dropping it. Like, drop it. You know, like that's more chances of finding a hit. That's more chances of having the next big single to, you know, break more records. You know what I'm saying? Moving on, y'all. As you all know, the year is coming to an end. 2024 is basically over. Almost. We have about 29, 30 days. Um, th- 30 days. But listen, okay. So. Many people are talking about, hmm, who was the most streamed female rapper of the year? Was it Doja Cat or Nicki? Results are in, results are in. Nicki Minaj is leading right now with 4.1 billion streams, and Doja has 4 billion. But people are just like, yo, Nicki, how are you still able to keep your foot on the neck this long? Okay. And, um, Consistency. She's she's consistent, okay? And even out of the quality of the newer girls, Nikki's quality of music is still very, very high. You know what I'm saying? It's still very, very high compared to what people are trying to like act like she's losing her touch and she's getting old now and Nikki is turning into little Kim. She can't make good music anymore. Nikki doesn't that's not applicable to her. Okay, no shade, she's still number one. But I'm surprised Doja Cat is still that close because she hasn't released any new music in like hundreds of days. You know what I'm saying? So it's just interesting to see. Um, she did drop Scarlet 2 um, Deluxe this year, but it kind of flopped. Like, nobody was talking about that shit at all. Like, I don't hear nobody talking about Scarlet. Like, no shade. Nobody brings up Scarlet. Like, <laughs> nobody brings up that album, yo. I swear. Nobody talks about that damn album. Like, except for online, on Twitter. Yeah, but on, in real life, nobody says, oh my gosh, go ahead and play Scarlet. Play Scarlet. Did you hear Scarlet? 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 No. I love Doja Cat. I love her down. I love her down. But Scarlet was just not that impactful, in my opinion. I'm sorry. I'm going to have people disagree and think, oh, you crazy, you crazy. It wasn't bad. It just was not the best of her art, you know? Planning her hot pink stand for Elle, okay? But yes, congrats to Nikki and Doja Cat for being the top two. Those two are the most artistic and creative and 
just innovative artists for right now. Like, for real, it's crazy. Moving on to Taylor Swift, she's currently being called out online right now. People are just really waking up the tea when it comes to her. Like, she's... Yeah, let's get into it. So there's this video of Taylor Swift on stage dancing. Very, very lame, corny, really boring. Very, you know, bland. Like, she, you know, her stage presence isn't the best, okay? Uh, and this is what they're saying. Um, they're saying Taylor was used to reshape the music industry. Her career gaslights the rest of the industry. They believe they're not good enough when really her mediocrity was made the standard. This isn't even about race. Her peers like Molly and Demi are far more talented with range. But hey, okay? So they're saying Taylor Swift isn't really talented. She just plays here to lower the standard and the status quo of being a pop star. But honestly, I feel like Taylor Swift, she is just very relatable to the average white girl. That's it. Like, she's very relatable to that demographic. Heartbroken. Like, like that is just her niche. And she found it. And she is really good at marketing. Her team is a... Taylor is a marketing genius, okay? That's why she's so big, okay? She knows how to do things, say things, and create things that really hit home with her target audience. You know what I'm saying? So, I wouldn't even really say it's about lowering the standard. I feel like if you have a great, like, you know, strategy to reach the people, you're going to always do better than a person with a lot of talent and bad marketing, you know? So, you know, it is what it is. Like, Taylor isn't talentless. She just doesn't really make you know, vocally challenging songs, but her songwriting is very much there. But I do feel like her um, stage presence and, you know, her actual music itself isn't very, like, groundbreaking. You know, it's not It's not at all. <laughs> it's not groundbreaking. Wow. Who would have ever thought that Sexy Red would be in more demand than Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion? Yes, Sexy Red has just surpassed both of those artists for the most monthly listeners on Spotify, which means that, yeah, more people are tuning into Sexy Red than Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B. I don't think that anybody would have guessed this, okay? Um, at least not when Pound Town first dropped. Like, when Pound Town first dropped, I thought Sexy Red was going to be a fluke, a one-hit wonder. Oh, yeah, she cute, you know, but she just, you know, I, I can't see her having longevity. But guess what? She has longevity, okay? That's insane. I think people are just so tired of the Cardis and the Megans and like people are just so tired of them for like not even because of their like oh they're like you know not talented da, da, da. And, like, people are just tired of their music period and they're just bored of them you know like they just you know I don't know how to explain it but I feel like once you get to a certain point and you don't switch it up enough and you don't bring anything new people gonna flick you to the side all right bye you know what I'm saying but Sexy Red knows how to keep people's attention okay but after a while you know, Sexy Red, if she don't do it right, she gonna become like them. <laughs> no shade. But I think that Sexy Red kind of just... she She's more interesting to me than, than Megan and Cardi. That may sound really like, what do you mean? Wow, wow, wow. But she just has more, like, authenticity to her. You know? Than all of them. You know what I'm saying? Than all the new girls. Like, yeah, I'm dirty and what? Yeah, I sucked the D last night. And what? Yeah, I ate the balls. And what? Like, yeah, bim me up like a pretzel. Bim, you know, stuff me like a turkey. Stuff like, and what? Like, you know, she has this like, and what persona about her that I love. Like, I think that's very, 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 um, you know, good to have. It's just that, you know, carefree, shameless thing, you know? But comment down below. Are you shocked that she is doing better than Megan and Cardi? Um, or the, you know, or it doesn't really shock you at all. You know, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Let's move on to this next topic. Okay. Wow, times are changing. The times are definitely changing. <laughs> Congratulations to SZA. Okay, SZA has now sold over 1 million career pure albums in the U.S. Okay, this is a big deal. Over two-thirds are on um, vinyl. Okay, so that's a big deal. People must love her vinyls. I'm always seeing her vinyls at Target, like Walmart. Every time I go there, like, they have her stuff stocked up. So people be buying her vinyls down. Congratulations, SZA. Over a million sold? That is a lot. Like pure that's a lot okay um but comparing it to past generations people would get a million like sold in like two or three months because you know back in the day all you know the only way you could get an album was if you bought the album like if you buy the album with your money like that's the only way you could you know get the album so you know for her to just now officially get a million like pure album sales like you know her career it's, you know, it's good, but back in the day, she would have been had that, you know? But times have changed. Time change, and I feel like there's nothing wrong with times changing. It's just that when you don't adapt to change and you don't know how to, you know, be with the times, you get left behind, okay? So, congrats. 
But no shade, SZA. But you would have been at two million by now if you put out your other new album already. But you want to wait till the end of the year. Why would you do that? Why? Are you, like, what is all this waiting for? Okay. She said, "Oh, I'm dropping." She, you know, and she also is dropping her SOS Deluxe this year. Okay. You know, she's dropping the Deluxe. Okay. But why would you wait until December to drop it? Like, you know, that's the holiday season. You know that. You know, you're going to get blackballed. With, you know, within the holiday music because. It's, ho- it's Christmas season. Like, nobody's songs does good during Christmas. That's the, like, literally. But who knows? Maybe she has this genius plan to hack the the, the system and hack the, the motherboard and, you know, get access to the, the main frame. Like, you know, you never know what she's going to do, okay? You never know. But yes, let's move on to this next topic. Congratulations. Drop it. Like, I will pinch you. I will pinch you. <laughs> Moving on to flop ass Katy Perry. So many people are online calling her a flop. Oh, she's lame. Oh, she's a loser. As you all know, she dropped her album in September, right? Mind you, her album is just now getting to 100,000 sold. Like, <laughs> literally just now getting to 100,000 units, okay? Which means that she, like, literally has to sell 400,000 more to get to gold status, which means that Katy Perry is officially a flop. Like, that's what that's what they're saying. I don't think she's a flop. I think she's talented, amazing, creative. But I think she has lost her touch with the generation, with music. And she no longer has that, like, that pull that she did, you know? In the 2010s, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I told, I told y'all. When you don't adjust to the times, you lose it. And Katy Perry is an example of that. Like, she has lost her grasp of what a hit is, you know? And, you know, that's just that. But, yes, Katy Perry, she ain't selling no more. And I feel bad for her because Katy Perry, she seems really genuine, you know. Um, and it just sucks to see a, a, a mainstream A-list act just barely sell units to the point where, like, it takes them three months to sell 100000 If Katy Perry was in her prime, she would have did 100000 the first three days of her album coming out. Like, that's how, that's how, her, that's how strong her impact was. Like, it's crazy to see this downfall. Like, I don't know. Comment down below. They're saying that she has pissed someone off in the industry and she is blackballed. Okay. And she's in her hate train era. But I don't know. I wonder what's going on. You know, because she seems pretty successful still, but it just seems like her music isn't really getting any push. Comment down below. Have you all tuned into Katy Perry's new album? Okay. Let's move on to this next topic. And what do you think about it? What do you think about it? Tyler joins WizKid as the only African artist in 2024 to have a solo song do over 1 million streams in a day on Spotify. Congratulations to Tyler and WizKid. I love WizKid too, but not as much as Tyler. Y'all know I love Tyler down. But um, this is this is major. But why, you know, aren't African artists more mainstream? As many, you know, acts that we have that are African, why aren't they as mainstream like that? Why is it? that only two artists are getting a million streams in a day. Like, that's what's weird, you know? I can't wait until we have a huge sea of African artists that are dominating, you know, on a large scale. I feel like African artists bring a whole new vibe to music, you know? Like, they bring a whole new aura, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have more Latin artists who are popular in the States than we do African artists. Like, why... You know, why is the visibility not that big in the States here, you know, or just in general in the music industry as a whole? You know, I feel like African artists need to have that push. But, you know, you know how colorism and racism plays a part in all the artists, you know, and you know how it goes. But, you know, African artists, they deserve, like, more artists doing well, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let's move on to this next topic. Moving on to Jack Harlow. He is currently bringing up the conversation. Why do white artists... You know, use the black culture to get famous. They use black culture, you know, as a, you know, aesthetic for their careers, right? And then, you know, once they make it, once they use that culture to, you know, their own gain, they drop it and they move on. For example, Miley Cyrus, you know, she was singing Jays on my feet, Jays on my feet, Ariana Grande, um, when she was in her black era, talking about some. When you see them racks, they stack up like my ass on her song Seven Rings. You know, she was acting real urban, da da da. Jack Harlow, you know, acting real urban and real, mm hmm, yeah, like I've been a G, throw up, like, you know, like real urban, right? But it's like they all get to a place where they drop it. Like it's just, it's gone. People are trying to figure out. Why do they wear our culture like it's a hat, like it's a jacket? Why do you wear our culture like it could just be picked up and put down? You know, it's just weird. And like, you know, when we do that stuff, we're called ghetto, lame, and trashy. But when you, when you, when you do it, it's, you know, it's edgy, it's fun, it's cool. 
Post Malone came into the game as some rapper with grills and brazen's head. Now he's doing country music, like some like you know trailer park. Tra like it's just I don't get it. Like why do why are they able to just genre hop in this and that a third and be called you know amazing and talented? But when Beyonce wants to genre hop and stuff like that, oh she needs to stick to doing what she's doing. Da da da. Like you can't do it. Like you like it's like we get put in a box, but they can they can borrow our culture and use it to their advantage whenever they want to for their own gain. But we can't switch up what we do. It's just weird. It's really sick. Comment down below. How do you feel about this conversation? People are calling Jack Harlow out for this. I've always felt like he was a corny. I always felt like he was like a lame. And not a lame because, you know, his music is bad. But just for the way he's, he moves. Like, it's like, you want to be black so bad. You do. Like, let's be real. You want to be black and it's corny. Okay. But yes, y'all, comment down below. What's your opinion? Let's chat. But yeah, that's all I have for you in today's video. Like, comment, subscribe. All right, y'all. Be safe.